everybody. We're just entering Goggleworks Center for the Arts in Reading, Pennsylvania at the entrance, which comes right through their beautiful new store, which is a fantastic store. You can shop for everything that you could imagine made by local people, local artists, artists who are here in the building and extremely friendly staff. And we're entering the gallery. This is the Cohen West Gallery. And this is my show, Aminal, walk you through, and we're gonna look at each piece individually, talk a little bit about it. Initially, this was going to be a live video, but we were unable to, to do that for a couple different reasons. And so we're going to make this video and you can post um, any questions you have or comments underneath the video when we post it on the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show Facebook page. So I want to thank the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show and all the collaboration that goes on there to make this happen. It's a great opportunity to be able to bring this show to you for those of you who can't get out here to read it to Reading. If you can get out here to Reading, the show is up through April 25th, and there are regular gallery hours, which are Monday through Friday. It's 11 to 9 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday, it's 11 to 7.30. All safety protocols are in place. Um, you'll have your temperature taken when you come in, you know, mask up, and, you know, distance, and you'll enjoy it. So, um, let's get started. This piece, Flare, this, this piece is, um, well, most of this work was made in 2020 and 2021. And so you can imagine, I mean, there's a lot going on in 2020 with the pandemic and of course, some other major natural disasters in the country. And I was thinking a lot about fire and flame and the role of animals and at both human and non-human animals and the role they played in that, um, not just the disaster, but also in the rescue and in trying to just essentially deal with the causes of those fires and understanding them. And I also have enjoyed working with painting flame for a very long time because it's symbolically, it has all kinds of stuff going on in it because um, it is living, flame is living and there are no two alike. So to me, there, any flame is sort of like a fingerprint and a lot can be read into them. So this is flame. By the way, in between we can appreciate these amazing crumbly brick walls, which I absolutely love. And I think they really set off the work well, especially since I'm interested in layering and revealing the underlayers in my work. Um, I just fell in love with these walls when I first came to Gobbleworks. This piece is, is called In the Distance. It's, it has sort of a domestic theme. And by the way, all of the work is um, mixed media. The way that I work, I start with a collage base and then move to acrylic, paint and work with the collage through acrylic. And eventually, I start to lay, lay on layers of oil and cold wax. Cold wax creates a lot of translucency within the oil, and so that allows me to see what's beneath it and really see the layers of within, you know, within the different areas so that there, isn't, there aren't any areas that actually don't have their history showing. Um, and that just is part of the fascination of working for me. And that's also, I think it kind of just wakes up your eyes 
know when you look at it. And when you wake up your eyes, you wake up your brain. So that's part of how I really love working. I usually start out with start out with colors that are com almost completely random. Like they could be just the leftover colors of a, of a palette I used the day before. And, and that is really, in a way, like the purpose, it's purposeful to be that um, like nonchalant about my first layers of colors. Because of all the, um, the subsequent layers that go on, because you can see through them. No initial color will ever turn out to be that color because there'll be several more layers of translucent color on top of it. So I'm unaware of how that color will actually come out. And that ability to kind of make something where I don't know what's gonna happen is you know, a big part of my process and part of what interests me about working. A lot of people do ask me about content when it comes to the imagery, um, I think that they see, you know, narrative imagery and and a lot of symbolism, and assume that I am trying to get at a certain idea, and sometimes that is true, and sometimes an idea comes to me later, but generally I'm not married to an idea when I start a piece, or even halfway or three quarters of the way through. Um, sometimes a piece will reveal to me what it's about, and then I'll follow that. So like for instance, in this case, I have been using the chair for a while as a, as a symbol of sort of contemplation and rest, and this particular type of chair you know, no one really sits in this type of chair. You know, it's it's not comfy. You know, there's you wouldn't sit in a chair like this to even to be at your computer. You know, you wouldn't certainly wouldn't sit and watch videos in a chair like this. So it, when when something's taken out of use, you know, in daily use, it often takes on symbolic value because it's free to be a symbol at that point, and that I think is is true of this chair symbol that I use. So in, in this case, where it's at the heart of this woman is holding it at her heart, I think of this as a way to um, find a place within yourself where you can be both alone and resting and be able to look out. So, you know, often, you know, our, our lives are a lot about Re being reflected back because we're always, you know, seeing ourselves now. So I, I really value that ability to get into, into a place where you can, um, you know, where you're not reflected, where you can really just look out and think about what is out, outside of you. So that's part of what I'm thinking about with this, with this piece. Oh, and the title, sorry, the title is Recall, um, and in that, I, I title them after they're finished most, most times, and that's because I have to think about, you know, what the, what the imagery um, evokes for me. And to me, it was recalling a time when it was easier just to actually be able to, like, sit and be quiet and think. So that's part of what that, that work is about. Oh, yes. Thank, Jean just reminded me that um, I should be talking about the sizes. So that piece is 36 by 36. And the piece before it, which I don't think I said the name of that either, that, that piece right before Recall, is called Anywhere and Here. And you know, it has that look of community, so I was thinking about our communities that we're all kind of you know, in more than ever right now. That piece is 48 by 36, I think. Anyway, you can get the general idea of the shape. All the information, if you do need more information on any individual piece, 
um, sizes, prices. Um, do go to goggleworks.org uh, and you can either get to the information through the gallery, it, which I think is under um, experience in their menu, but or just go to shop. And shop has them all listed and there's pictures of all of them with the measurements and everything and you can get you know, the details there. So this piece is called Intersection. This is another, another mixed media piece with many layers. Some people have compared it to um, like an old um, wall, like in the city where you see there have been you know, announcements pasted up and then torn down or the weather is, has ripped them off or they've been layered over with other layers of paint and, and that, that is really, that's really dead on for this piece because I just, with this piece, I just really got into the surface and, and of course I did include this sort of dog figure and then this humanoid kind of monster with a pink sock on. Um, and that is just, you know, that's what cities and, you know, all, all of these communities we're in, they're all about relationships. And they're often about relationships between humans and other domesticated animals. So that's part of what is reflected in this piece. Thanks for showing all that detail, Jean. Super. There's our door. Okay, this piece is, uh, let's see, 30, it's 32 by 40, and this is called Keepsake. Again, another mixed media piece, a lot of cold wax in this one. It has sort of a matte finish to it. And you know this piece, I'm not. I'm still not exactly sure what this is about. I, I began to understand after I, you know, while I was painting it, that this, you know, kind of woman goat figure was running from something. It seems so. She's in some way escaping this house on the right, which has kind of a jail symbol on it with the with the rods on the windows which then is also reflected in what she's taking with her. She's, she's taking something of her place that she's leaving, and that is the bird in this sort of cage-like cage um, element, because uh, it's not an actual cage, but you kind of get that feeling from it. And bird, the bird appears a lot in my work throughout the years, and it all, bird always represents to me voice, so freedom of, of voice. So this, um, you know, she's, it looks to me like she's trying to take some part of what is hers with her in her journey. So that's keepsake. Okay. And here's a little piece that I just, I just adore. This one is called Watchman, and this is, a, this is an acrylic piece. I think it's the only fully acrylic piece in, in the show. And, you know, it, to me, I mean, what could feel more like 2020 but these sort of isolated houses? And then I, I have this kind of looming animal shape who I see as, um, you know, kind of a protector and also a connector uh, because of course we do connect through what we love what and who we love so that's part of what this piece is about and that's eight by eight inches this is soft landing and i've done a couple pieces with this theme and the what's important to me with this theme of um, birds on the back of animals that we would think of as, you know, furry animals like a dog or a horse or a sheep or something like that, is that like out in the, out in the world and the wild and, but also maybe not so wild, um, birds will often 
sit on the backs of, of horses or cows and it's protecting the birds because they're up off the ground so they're not as vulnerable to predators but then they also tend to eat all the little bugs off the backs of those animals which greatly relieves those animals from a lot of annoying um, you know discomfort and so that's kind of what I was thinking about you can tell by the look on the face that at least to me he looks like he's he's relieved <laughs> he looks uh, mildly happy to have this this bird perching on his on his back this one is is interesting it's actually painted on a found object it's a a tabletop that's been carved and it's painted to um, sort of represent a, a rabbited frame, but that is all paint, the black and the gray frame, it's, it's all paint. Down, down this beautiful hallway, <laughs> isn't that gorgeous? That goes to the wood shop, you can see above there, and, and this old, the old door that leads to the, the old elevator, it's just beautiful. I love what they've kept when they restored this building. This piece is, this is called Dawn of the Gray Fox. And again, not a literal interpretation, but I was thinking about foxes as I was painting because we, we went camping this year. That's one of the things that is actually open to do very easily is, you know, camp outdoors. And so consequently, the campgrounds are overflowing. But anyway, we went to one where at night, we kept seeing all these eyes shining in our flashlight um, light as we sort of like peered out into the surrounding, you know, forest around us. And, and it turns out that it was likely gray foxes, which are nocturnal, and they also have the ability to climb trees. So uh, this is just, I was just thinking about that while I was doing this. But also, you see in the tree, there's also uh, a face at the, sort of at the bottom, and then there's one up in the foliage. And, and I do think of, you know, trees and other um, things that grow and change. I think of them as animate, and I think of them as having personalities. Uh, I don't think I'm alone in that. I mean, that's, you know, that's also, you know, an age-old belief by many people. But the, they have found out fairly recently some very scientific information that points to the fact that trees do communicate with each other and make all kinds of decisions about their lives through these sort of underground organisms, which was super interesting to me. So that is Dawn of the Gray Fox. Oh, that's, isn't that, isn't that cool? I don't even know what that is, but I like it. The shadow of the, on the window. And this is Midnight Fields Are Singing. I have just a special place in my heart for this picture. It's, it just, you know, I think a lot about at night how a lot of uh, activity through what is, what is living outside our homes and in the fields and the um, forests and you know, basically any, anywhere we aren't, there's lots of people or lots of persons, I should say, and personalities um, playing out their, their lives and at night that, that can really come alive for all kinds of reasons. So this is sort of a nighttime scape. They now have photography where they can actually film animals at night and it appears to be light, like we can see it in a video. Um, so that's part of what I was thinking about when I lit up this landscape to be um, white, even though the sky is dark. This one is 
Um, this one's called Long John's Diversion. And I, this one, this one's kind of funny to me. Um, I'm not completely sure what this is about, but I know that one thing that's going on is that this, this human person on the left wearing red has a sort of a, like a paper mache horse's head that he's wearing. So he's sort of playing a role of, of an animal. And then the, the little animal on the right has a, a sort of a, what I think of as like a paper mache mask of a person. So there's like this role reversal happening. And, you know, I think about that, you know, anyone who has, has an animal or, you know, lives with an animal understands that they, they have personalities, they have individual individuality, and they have a lot of, you know, what we would think of as human traits. And I, I pictured the animals that we live with checking us out and, and thinking of us as other animals as well. So that's part, at least part of what that's about. One, one thing I really love about this piece is the glowing sun, this sort of sunrise coming up in the background. It's one of my favorite parts of that. Okay, this piece I call this piece Some Days My Monster. And I initially had the title um, as, well, not the title, but I had made up this idea about it, which was that some days I, I can keep my monster on a leash and everything's okay. And some days he gets loose and wrecks the house. So I just, that's part of what I was thinking here. And in this case, the person, the person person is able to keep their monster on a leash. But um, I don't know, the painting to me has a lot of chaos in it. So it looks like lots of things could happen, or at least there's a lot of potential for stuff to happen. It's one of my favorites. I think we all deal with things like that, thoughts that, that we could, you know, maybe on any given day we could do without. Nevertheless, they're there always and they do come and go as they please. And you know, you learn to live with it. And speaking of thoughts, this piece, this, sm this is a smaller piece, that one, um, some days my monster that we just saw, that one is 40 by 40. So that's the second largest piece in, in the exhibit. Uh, this is a smaller piece, it's 14 by 14. This is called Pet Thought. And I was, again, I'm, I think a lot about sort of the nature of thoughts. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I see happening with thoughts is that I, I personally will sort of take a thought and then I'll make a pet out of it. Like I'll, you know, I'll feed it and I'll stroke it and I'll, you know, cuddle up with it. And that doesn't mean I should be doing that or that it's a good thing, but I see that happening. And so I, I just wanted to sort of externalize this idea of having, having a thought like that, that sort of follows you around and, you know, you, you may have a love-hate relationship with it, but nevertheless, it seems to be a part of you. And which, of course, is a situation you could change. But anyway, that kind of thinking was in this, this painting. This is the largest piece in the, the show. This is called In the Garden. So we're backing up, backing up to try to see it all. This is, it's um, six feet. So the height is six feet, the width is um, five and a half feet. And I mean, it's a big piece for a big story because this story of the garden is, it's been with me for a really long time. I have all kinds of renditions of, of the garden. And that's partly because of course I love story and this is, you know, this is 
a founding story for just about everything we do here. And, you know, whether you believe the story or not, it's, it certainly is a story that has, um, it has a, a whole structure that is very much a part of our lives. So I'm always interested in what happened in that garden? You know, what, what are the metaphors? What, what are the analogies? And I'm interested in who was there and what did they do and who were these characters? So in this one, you know, I have a slight twist on it. I mean, there is a snake, of course, and the snake isn't necessarily evil. The snake is, in, in my view, being sort of welcomed by this larger creature in the center and that creature, which could be viewed as sort of monstrous, I see him more as a guardian, possibly for this um, dog person, who or the person in the suit of the animal. Um, also, you'll, note, you'll notice just in the treatment of the painting, again, mixed media, lots of layers, you know, starts out with collage. This one is actually about four paintings because I just kept making renditions and not being satisfied with them. I'd make another one, not be satisfied with that. And so all that history comes through, which I love. So I have to say that my, my series of failures is actually part of the ultimate success of any piece that I make. Um, so with the, but the person in the dog suit is the one face that's true, truly rendered in, in a more realistic way. And the other faces have, are rendered, rendered less realistically. And that's partly because I want to convey a sense of fantasy that is um, sort of emanating from the, the person in the dog suit. There's always people in, in animal suits too, like throughout my work where it's a person with an animal face. And it just generally interests me that, you know, we're great apes and somehow lost that idea along the way. quiet piece. I think of this as a quiet piece. It's called Captive Sky. It's 24 by 24 inches. And again, you have this idea of um, captivity, which is a part of, you know, domestication and all of our lives. And to me, this um, figure in the red is sort of making an offering uh, of a cloud <laughs> to this other small animal who looks very skeptical about it and is also being snowed on from nowhere. But this, um, there's this house form in the back and the house form surrounds them, which the house form has like tons of symbolic, uh, you know, um, just it, it just has a lot of I don't want to call it baggage because it's not negative it just has tons of symbolism to it sim symbolic history and um, both of these the, the red person creature and then the animal person creature are both being surrounded by the house so they're both you know influenced by the house form and the house form is, imp is important you know I mean even you know, even an animal will go to like a cave or some kind of shelter. You know, it's a, it's a sheltering symbol as well as a symbol of, you know, being captive. So, you know, kind of a yin-yang, double-edged sword kind of thinking. We are getting, we should be wrapping it up. 
We're gonna go feed through these last couple. Okay, this piece I call Bungalow Days. I think of this piece as being very lighthearted. And partly it's, I think, just the blue and white. It always feels like, this feels, piece feels very beachy to me and it's kind of like a windy summer day. And then in 2020, when we were all, you know, in our own homes so much during that summer, um, you know, we found ways to, I don't know, share with each other, connect, and, you know, everybody was doing the same kind of experimenting. You know, what can we do? to try to be together when we couldn't be together. So I, I just see this as a very, um, it's a piece that just reminds me of last summer. And the bungalow word, I never hear that word being used, so of course it didn't interest me. <laughs> um, but I, the, there used to be on some beaches you could rent these little houses where you could change I think maybe they still have them more maybe in Europe, but I think of those as these little bungalows. So um, because this has like a beachy, windy feeling to it, I, I just decided to brand these house forms with that word bungalow. And then I immediately started whistling um, the Beatles, Hey Bungalow Bill, and I couldn't stop for like two days. That happens a lot songs in my life. Okay. okay, these little pieces are so funny to me because they weren't made at all together. But when we hung them like this, it, it, they really seem like a diptych. And the shapes just and the color just went so nicely together. And even the theme, um, again, super layered, like lots of sanding, scraping, revealing, and then, you know, shaping the narrative. But, um, you know, this one, this person is sort of pro proclaiming something with this, you know, hat on with an idea of importance. And, you know, he looks like, listen to me. I don't think we know anyone like that. And then this woman looks so skeptical, like, you know, whatever. And then this, the one, so this one is called 2-2, T-O-O dash T-O-O. And just that sort of feeling of over the top, you know. And, and then on the right, that one is called um, uh, Speaking of Flowers. So that, I can, I really know what that one was about. So that one came to me um, as a way of taking back our, our, our own breath and our own, um, you know, the, the one thing we couldn't do, you know, we couldn't really speak to each other directly during this whole year. So um, it interested me that when we could, that we would take it back in a way that, you know, we could talk about things that were beautiful again and wonderful, you know, that made our lives meaningful. So that's part of what that's about. Oh, this is, um, this one is called Out of Grandola, which is a fictitious place that I, you know, I just made that up. and. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I, I'm super interested in the idea of escape because, of course, which fits very well with my other interests of, you know, captivity <laughs> and <laughs> domestication. So, um, you know, I just see this as, you know, one of those moments where we all find a way to be wild or to find what's wild within us. You know, when things start to be just too battened down um, and that moment, um, whatever that is for you, you know, everyone has a different way. It doesn't have to involve physically leaving someplace. It could be another way to escape. So 
And then I, I you know, I have the pet there and, and, or the animal and, you know, that's, that'll always mean somewhat com comforting thoughts to me um, and thoughts of home. So we're going to pan around here and walk over and look at the posts. On the central post, there's a couple pieces to talk about. This is My Blue Heaven, and this piece, you know, I, I really hesitate to pin it down to anything. You know, it's, it's so open-ended. You have you know, themes that recur for me, like thoughts and thought patterns coming, coming out as little clouds, you know, the cloud above the head, it clearly feels like a thought might go there, but that thought is not defined. And to me, her face just looks very resolved, calm and resolved. That's 14 by 14, my blue heaven. This one was absolutely inspired by something I'm really clear on. I mean, it, in a way it's a garden, another garden picture, but um, it's this is to me very specifically about that, that life that pops up around uh, water sources. So, you know, out in, you know, could be in your yard, it could be in the, in near a walking trail that you see. I mean, even a, a temporary water source that comes and goes, all this life will pop up around it. So I was thinking about that and keeping it very abstract. So there's little creatures coming in and out. There's a cat and a bird and the fish and in here, there's a, you can just see a little bit of a goose. And that's part of that original layering that I do when I put the collage on. Um, that's from one of those old drawing books that you had when you were kids. I don't even know if they still have them, but it used to be you could get a drawing book and it would say, here's how you draw these animals. And you do it by, you do a circle, a circle, and then an oval, and then a stick, and a stick, and you connect. And it was just this step-by-step -step way of drawing these animals. And, you know, you try to do it and it never looked like the book, but that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, I found one of those old books and... It was a great source for collage. Another 14 by 14 here with um, Cardinal's Rule. And sometimes I just like to create a character and I think that's pretty much what's happening here. It's just a little bird, bird lady just hanging out. We have a lot of cardinals in our yard. This is uh, Cradle the Sun. And let's move over here. Maybe there'll be less glare. There's there we go. Oh, great, cool. Yeah, so this was actually made in the winter um, of 2020. Uh, yeah, wait, yeah, it was fall going into the winter, like when the sun's disappearing, and, you know, so I just had this idea of a person who's, you know, like, protecting the, the sun while, while we had it, and this one is a, as a, this is a, has a backstory as a painting that often happens to me, which is, I'll do an entire painting, um, and no matter what I do with it, it just, no, it's just laying there. Because the painting has to like sort of come alive for me in some way that I really can't define. And this one was, um, it actually was a painting of a chicken. So it was turned completely upside down. And you could still see the chicken parts in it. So this is the leg of the chicken. And then the body, this the the chicken 
um, the back feathers came this way and the head came out this way. And then the other leg was like here, which is completely covered up. And mm, just couldn't, mm, mm, just wasn't doing it. So I turned it upside down and started to see this. And that's when it came alive for me. That's, that's it. It's something that happens all the time and something that I can do very, very easily with paintings this size. Now with a painting like in the garden over there with the, the I just, I can't just turn it upside down and easily. Um, I may be able to do that once, but not like four times. So I have to look for a different route to be re-inspired when something isn't, if something isn't working. Um, so is this the last piece? This is the last piece and this is, we'll move over. Yeah. See if we can get some glare off the cocoa. Cool. Um, so this piece is um, sail. Mm -hmm. This piece is sail away, and sail away is. Um, oh, excuse us, just a sec. We're doing a little changing of the guard here. Thank you. Okay. Sail away is a piece that is. Um, You know, this is just pure fantasy. I mean, I guess during the, the pandemic, who didn't want to sail away, right? And so I have this animal person who's basically just daydreaming. It's very, I feel like there's a very dreamy look in their eye. Let's get in on that eye. There we go. And this little sailboat, his or her, I try not to gender the, the people or animals, but you know sometimes they have a female or a male feeling to them. And that's okay. That, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. It was really a good experience to be talking about the pieces. And I hope that you do have questions and that you will post them under the video um, because I'm, I'm really happy to answer them. So again, uh, this is a video it was originally supposed to be live, but you know, this is how it worked out So I'm just thrilled that we were able to do it and I want to thank the Rittenhouse board again Rittenhouse Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show board for putting this all together and and just making this opportunity for artists on the five o'clock club Which is every Thursday every Thursday at five is a different artist who will take you to the, through their studio or their process and just give you an intimate glimpse into what they do and how they think. It's just a great program. So um, I hope you'll tune in again to another five o'clock. And thanks a lot for watching this one. And thank you to Gala Works, which is just a wonderful place to be, good energy. And I hope you can come see the show Aminal. Take care.